Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2020 Day in the Life of the Hudson and Harbor. We are here in the headwaters of the Hudson River at Henderson Brook, one of the many streams that feed into the Hudson River watershed. Henderson Lake is in the Adirondack Mountains in the town of Newcomb, about 306 miles from the Atlantic Ocean. Now here, Henderson Lake Outlet will join Calamity Brook. The confluence of Outland and Brook is where the Hudson River first takes its name. The water temperature is much cooler up here in the Adirondacks. Why do you think that is? Be sure to have your data sheet and pencil ready as we explore the Hudson River. I'm here today at Peebles Island, which is in Saratoga County for Day in the Life. Uh, Peebles Island is a really cool site because it's the confluence of the Mohawk and the Hudson Rivers. So if you look over here to my right, this is the Mohawk River that's coming in to meet the Hudson. We just took some water samples and went seining and we're gonna start digging into our findings now. Hello everybody, my name is Amanda Simmons. Today I'm recording the water temperature where in Saratoga County where the Hudson River meets the Mohonk River. This thermometer here will be measuring water temperature. This is in degrees Celsius. So what do you all think the water temperature is today? That's right. It is about 17 degrees Celsius. We just went seining, which is when you catch fish with this big net, you can see my, my friends behind me going seining. Um, we caught a bunch of the same species of fish that are in this bag. And I want to see if you can identify what they are before I tell you what they are. So these are spot tail shiners. And a cool fact about them is that they have deciduous scales, which is a word that you may have heard to describe trees before. So trees that are deciduous are trees that lose their leaves in the fall. And that's exactly what these fish do with their scales. If you touch them with your hands, their scales will flake off very easily. Hi, we're here at Peebles Island, Mohawk River. We just went seeing and we caught this beautiful fish. Can you guess what it is? It is a smallmouth bass. We are here in Green Island at the head of the Hudson River Estuary, looking directly at the Troy Dam. New York Harbor and the Atlantic Ocean are 153 miles south from here. We're going to learn about the water here, the amazing creatures that call the Hudson their home, and some of the diverse waterfronts around the area. And there's more. Two other videos will help you compare what you find in this video to other parts of the estuary. And all three of them are recorded on the same day in October 2020. We're going to look at lots of water quality parameters and fish in the next few minutes, so you may want to have your data collection form with you or even just a pencil and paper to write down your notes. Today, you are the scientist. Make sure to record what you see and hear. Pay special attention today to the water temperature and dissolved oxygen levels in the Hudson as our educators share some important information with you. At the end of this video, you can take a deeper dive into these topics with our guest scientists. But for now, let's start exploring. Hi everybody, the Troy Dam is behind me and we are going to test our dissolved oxygen from a sample that we just took from the water just now. Um, so we've already put some reagents in here to, to stain the oxygen and make it a different color. And what I'm going to be doing is adding one drop of this solution at a time. And for every drop that we add, if we see a color change, that equals one part per million dissolved oxygen. So I'm going to add one drop at a time and you can count along and we'll see how much dissolved oxygen is in our sample today. You ready? It's getting clearer. looks almost clear but not quite all right let's give it one more and see if we see a change that looks clear to me 
We are the River Haggies. Our waiters are not baggy. I am Fran. And I am Liz. And welcome to the Hudson. We will use our say net, and maybe we will get wet. And you will wish to see the fish we capture on the Hudson. Hello, we are at Ernest R. Lasher Memorial Park in Germantown at River Mile 110. And we are here to do the day in the life of the Hudson River. I'm Heidi Bach with the Columbia Land Conservancy. And I'm here with my friends and coworkers. And we're getting ready, putting waders on. And we're gonna go collect some data. So stay tuned. Special day, Hudson River, day in the life 2020. Where we are right now, Saugerties, New York. We're in a park, Ulster Landing Park, River Mile 97. There is a beach, nice. There is the river, the mountains, and the changing trees in the season of fall. We are learning about the Hudson River as an estuary, water sampling, fish in the river, 97 miles north from New York City. New York City, the river water is mighty salty, connected to the ocean. We're still connected to the ocean, but the water that we find here has less salt in it. Fresh water from the rain, fresh water from the mountains. So continue your studies on this beautiful Hudson River as an estuary, a wonderful environment. Thanks for joining me, and we'll hope to see you soon. Take it easy, everybody. Thermometers. Testing temperature. This is an air thermometer, checking the temperature of the air. This is a special thermometer we're putting in the water to test the temperature of the water. As scientists, it's important to gather this information, record the data, so that way we can check the health of the river. The air temperature is kind of a little bit easier. We see Fahrenheit, we see Celsius, the red line going up and up and up will give us the number of the temperature in the air. Water temperature is a very important measurement, a parameter to record because the temperature of the river might tell us maybe how much oxygen is in there. Maybe if the air temperature has changed and that will affect all living things, plants and animals. So temperature using thermometers, air and water a very important parameter as we learn about the Hudson River. Here we are at Kingston Point Beach in Kingston, New York. We are 90 miles north of New York City along the shorelines of the Hudson River. And today's day in the life of the Hudson River, a day for us to explore what we've got and, and the quality of our river here on the Hudson. We have a beautiful location. We are at Kingston Point Beach, which is a man-made beach that is one of, of only a handful of official swimming beaches in and along the Hudson River. We're in a shallow cove here and surrounding us we've got all different types of land uses. This is a place where people come swimming, fishing, kayaking, boating, and environmental education like we're doing today. But historically this was a location for the extraction industry. Extraction industry like brick making, like this Hutton brick that you see here and the remaining brickyard that we see off in the distance. This was also a place where ice harvesting would take place and cement making. So a really historic place throughout the, our river and the history, but also important to us nowadays. Hello, uh, so here at Kingston Point Beach, we also caught some bluegill, uh, some spot tail shiners, and some banded killifish. And then one other fish we got here is actually one of my favorites. This is a young of year fish over here. So it was just hatched this year. And I want you to take note of a couple things. Um, it's got those stripes going horizontally and vertically. It's got pectoral fins, those are present. And then check out those dorsal fins, those two dorsal fins. And if you look over here at my model of a fish, these are what we call the dorsal fins. So this fish has two of them. 
and look very closely at them because it looks similar to another young of year fish. So why don't you pause the video, look at your Clearwater Identification Booklet, tell me what you think it is. All right, so welcome back. You should have uh, found out that it is a striped bass, not a white perch. Again, if you look at the dorsal fins, they're slightly separated, where a white perch, they're actually uh, connected just slightly. It's a day in the life of the Hudson River! Okay, we are gonna test the dissolved oxygen of the Hudson River water here at Nori Point today. So we've prepared a sample of Hudson River water and it is mixed and prepared now so that no more oxygen can get into it and no oxygen can get out of it. We've dyed each oxygen molecule um, a color bright yellow so that we can actually see it. What we're gonna do is strip the color away molecule by molecule until it's clear and we'll count how many drops of this chemical, sodium thiosulfate, it takes to strip away all of the yellow color and leave us with a nice, clear sample of Hudson River water. And then we'll know how much dissolved oxygen is in there. Now oxygen gets in the water from plants that are photosynthesizing or from wave action that is mixing oxygen in there. The things that need oxygen in the water include zooplankton, fish, um, any kind of living organism below the surface of the water that doesn't breathe up in the air. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take this prepared sample and count with me how many drops it takes to break those bonds and let us know how much dissolved oxygen is in here. So one, not clear yet. When it's clear, we know how many. Two, not clear yet. Three, not yet. Four, so the sample's not clear yet. We have at least four parts per million dissolved oxygen. Now most fish need a minimum of four to survive. Five, six, seven, eight, we're getting close, looking clear, nine, Ooh, I think we found it. It took nine drops, which means there's nine parts per million dissolved oxygen in this sample of clear Hudson River water. All right, everybody. Now we're gonna test the water temperature. Thermometer in the water. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Acclimated. All right. We have water temperature of 62, 4, 6, 66 degrees or 18, 66 Fahrenheit or 18 Celsius today here in the Hudson River water. Another rock. Get in there, guys. Yeah, y'all can come on over. Whoa, I got something. Woo! Woo, little crab. Oh my god. Is that a crab? Yeah, sure is. Grab the bucket, IJ. Move it a little. Good thing you grabbed him. He was headed. Here we are at River Mile 87. You can see right here on the signage, 87 miles to the mouth of the Hudson River at the Battery in New York City where the Hudson River feeds into New York Harbor. And let's take a quick look at the site here because this is a beautiful spot on the river. So let's check it out. So you can see the shoreline there. You might be asking yourself, why do they call it a Meadows? 
Well, if you were here in July, this entire area would be a huge mat of green growing plants. Now, unfortunately, these plants are water chestnuts, so they're an example of an invasive species, but it's just one indication of how the area got its name. Because if you see way off in the distance, you can see the Esopus Meadows Lighthouse. And the lighthouse is out in the middle of the river there because the river, because between here and the lighthouse, the water is extremely shallow. At low tide, it's only about two feet deep. So that lighthouse is out there to warn the boaters to stay on the other side of the lighthouse where the water is deeper and the boats will not hit the bottom of the river. So this is our site here, Sopus Meadows, River Mile 87. So here's an awesome specimen from Sopus Meadows, River Mile 87. Look at those dorsal fins standing up proud. You can't quite see the ruler in the back there, but it's approximately six and a half inches, approximately 17 centimeters or so. And that dorsal fin standing up like that is gonna give you a good clue as to how, uh, what fish this is to help you identify it using your fish key. I will tell you that it's a freshwater fish. I will tell you that it's a predator and it eats just about anything it can fit in its mouth. That's a clue too. Behind me, you can see the walkway from Poughkeepsie to Highland. And the weather is pretty nice. It was 64 degrees when recorded earlier. And we came here nine o'clock in the morning and leaving around 11. So I'm filling up the turbidity tube all the way to the top, which is 60 centimeters. All right. And at the bottom of this tube, there's what's called a secchi disc, which is a small circle with black and white uh, kind of pie slices on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Colin release that and I'm gonna let him know how far down the water needs to go until I can see that black and white secchi disc. All right, go ahead, Colin. Stop. And if you'd like to measure it yourself, you can pause the video here. And what I'm looking at is about 19 centimeters in depth. River mile 76. We are 76 miles north from New York City. Now, New York City connected to the ocean, lots of salt water. As you travel north closer to the mountains, less salt water, less salt water. And finally, we come to an area of the river that's mostly fresh water from the rain and the mountains. Poughkeepsie, so amazing. You saw a pan of the shot. We saw the Mid-Hudson Bridge, and then we see the walkway over the Hudson. A beautiful bridge only for walkers, bikers, no cars allowed on that. Our special sampling spot today in between these two bridges. Now, here we might have a little bit of salt in the river, but mostly fresh. This is a nice colorful fish we find in lots of places in the Hudson River. Now, if you're a colorful fish, it's kind of hard to hide. Look at its tail. You can pause the camera. You can pause the video at any time. So that way you can identify this fish becoming scientists and learning more about fish in your own backyard in the Hudson River. Look at those fins. Take a look at its nose, its eyes, its mouth. Thank you all for joining us for Day in the Life 2020. Stay tuned for our guest scientist. Thank you so much for joining us for Day in the Life of the Hudson River 2020, focusing on the upriver section. Now we looked through a bunch of parameters, but we're going to take a nice deep dive into two of them today. So if you wanna join me, stay tuned. So the first factors are seasons and water temperature. In this picture at Poughkeepsie overlooking that walkway over the Hudson, you can see that it's becoming fall. The temperatures are cooling, which also means the water temperatures are going to cool. 
Um, things like rain can actually cool off the water temperature as this cool rain is entering into the Hudson from the entire watershed. Uh, river depth impacts water temperature as well. So if you are at the surface, you are going to be warmer than as you get down to the cool depths of the Hudson. And things like shade provided by trees overlooking the Hudson um, can definitely cool off water temperatures as well. And if you have a big windy event that's stirring up that cool deep water at the depths of the Hudson to the surface, it's going to cool off um, the Hudson as well. The turbidity of the water actually impacts water temperature. So if you think about the Hudson and how the Hudson is a darker, more turbid system, that dark color actually absorbs more solar radiation from the sun that can actually heat it up. And the last one I wanted to mention is climate change. So humans are a part of the natural system. So the things that we do, such as producing excess CO2 that's warming our climate, also warms the water temperature. The other parameter that we want to talk about is dissolved oxygen or DO. Dissolved oxygen is crucial for uh, a healthy body of water. So there's a couple different ways that oxygen can get into the water. There's direct diffusion from the atmosphere, so the relationship between the atmosphere and the surface water can diffuse oxygen into the water. Um, if you have a windy event or fast moving water, that can actually increase the interaction with the atmosphere, which would then put more oxygen in the water. Just as plants on land produce oxygen for our atmosphere, plants in the water that are completely submerged can produce dissolved oxygen. There's actually a direct relationship between these two parameters that we're discussing. As the water temperature is increasing, the dissolved oxygen is decreasing. That's because as the water molecules are heating up and they're exciting, they're moving faster, they're actually unable to hold on to these additional oxygen molecules and so instead they're releasing them so the capacity that water can hold on to oxygen decreases as the temperatures get warmer. All right, thank you so much for taking this dive with me and don't forget to check out the other two videos of the day in the life of the Hudson River, looking at the mid to lower section and the harbor. Thanks everybody.